I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the founder of the church I served as a bishop. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. Many others have made a similar journey into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about, people who want to share their story. So if you're a Latter-day Saint seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and again, I appreciate you joining us and hoping you're finding this interesting and learning something, or maybe you're turning in for the, tuning in for the first time, and uh, we hope you find this message to be hopeful. Anyway, we have Dave Kayas here with us, and I appreciate you coming and sharing your story. Yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah. It's great. So where were you born? Dave. I was born in Ogden, Utah. You were, huh? Yep. And did you ra were you raised there? Uh, only there for a short time. My parents moved to uh, Northern California. Oh, okay. For the first five years of my life. Yeah. And were they Mormon? Were yes. they LDS? Yes. Were you a long history, a generational kind yeah, of Mormon? Yeah, mine or? is. If you've ever heard the name Bingham. Oh, uh, for Bingham sure. Canyon, oh, yeah. That's my grandparents. Oh my goodness. Uh, my on my mother's side, it was Hutchings. There's a Hutchings Museum in Lehigh, Utah. Oh, okay. A huge one. My goodness. So my family. A lot of history with, yeah. with that. How many brothers and sisters do you have? I have one brother and two sisters. Okay. So we're just just a nice, normal little Mormon family yeah. that growing up in, in different places, yeah. it sounds like. And uh, were they always active and you were active? Uh, uh, not to the extent of temple going Mormons or, or oh. anything like that. My grandparents were yeah. really active, so okay. uh, it had that influence on us sure. to where, yeah, you know, it was the, <laughs> you need to go to church. If you come to visit us, we were going to church. We're My mom was pretty active. She was active as, yeah. as far as in her younger years, yeah. mutual. My dad was too. Okay. Um, but as they had us and had a family, I think they kind of, oh went away a little did you, bit. Did you get baptized at age oh, yeah. eight and yeah. all that? Yeah. Did you go into priesthood? Yeah, and scouts I only made it, stuff? I was only a teacher in the priesthood. Oh, okay. So. Well, that happens quite a bit. I mean, I, I think people will, will, will relate to that in the sense of people that uh, don't progress through, but you, uh, you made it to teacher and, mm -hmm. and you go to high school. Did you ever take seminary? Yes. Oh, did you? In, yeah, in high it was school? kind of a requirement, you know. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <I> expected. <laughs> yeah, especially back then. Yeah. Um, I did take seminary. The problem, I, I always felt like I was going to get kicked out of seminary because I questioned. Really? I can remember uh, in seminary here in St. George that going to one of the classes and, and I got really hung up on the word of wisdom and on the coffee and tea. Aspect As being it. wrong or strange well, or something? The Word of Wisdom says hot drinks, not coffee and tea. So I wanted an explanation for that. Yeah, well, and how did we come up with coffee and yeah, tea when it says hot drinks? Exactly. Yeah. And then, you know, go to my grandparents and they didn't drink coffee or tea or anything because sure. of the Word of Wisdom. They drink Paro. Yeah. Uh, you know, back then. <laughs> mom, my mom drank Postum. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. she loved coffee but uh, had to have her Postum. Yeah. So. That's funny, isn't it? It's kind of, and it's a hot drink. Yeah. That's what's funny. And then, of course, soup and hot chocolate and all that. Yeah. But, but the explanation always came, it's the caffeine that it wasn't good for you. <laughs> but if you read it, it says not hot drinks because it's not good for the belly. Right. Um, if, you, if you're worried about caffeine, my question always was, well, why can you eat chocolate? Yeah. Or, you know, or yeah, any or anything else that's got and caffeine. and all that that so, came along later. Yeah. Uh, and that's part of, part of the problem with the law, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's interesting. So you never got any re real good answers to your questions? No, and, never did. Okay. Actually, just, you know, be quiet and, yeah. and don't worry about that part. You know. <laughs> so did you, after high school, what, what happens in life? Well, after high school, I uh, uh, went to college for a short time, mm -hmm. and then I ended up getting married okay. to another Mormon woman yeah and we had two was children she, act, well, you were she was then. more active than I was I yeah. really I got disillusioned mine my story started in about 1978 when the church oh yeah uh, changed from you know as I was growing up blacks couldn't hold the priesthood right you know I wasn't 
a prejudice type person, but I believed if you set down a rule, especially if it came from the prophet, then that rule had to stay. Right. You know. Well, when Hinckley came out and decided in the middle of it uh, <laughs> to change it yeah. and allow it, I saw that as you know you're either going against God now, or you were going against God before. Yeah, they both can't be. Can't be they both. Can't of, be both correct. of them. Yeah. And then also, I remembered uh, back then, just previously from when Hinckley allowed that to happen. It was actually, I think, President Kimball oh, back yeah, in the day. Sorry about that, yeah. you know, but. Um, uh, it was right before that there was a, a bishop up in Oregon or Washington, yeah. and he had ordained a black person in the priesthood. Oh, really? And I remember him getting excommunicated for doing that. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden. They got got changed. You know, permitted. And that bothered you. Yeah, that bothered you. You thought about it. Well, I was aware of it, and actually for me it was one of those moments of, okay, the end's getting closer. That was one of the fulfillments of prophecy that the blacks would, or at least in my mind, was would get the priesthood and have the ability to go to the temple, but that bothered you a little bit. Huh? Yeah, because it w- I really didn't I seem didn't like it was it advertised that, that yeah. it was that was going to happen, because yeah. as I remembered, and I've questioned another uh, you know, Mormons since then, is, as, as I grew up, I was always taught that uh, they were the descendants of Cain, right? yeah. and yeah. that's why they And came they weren't up. as valiant in the pre-existence, yep. and they were and fence-sitters yep. or something. <laughs> yep. And so... <laughs> yeah, we had all those reasons why they couldn't... Yeah, but nowadays, that history's changed, right? Well, they've had to, they've had to look at it differently and yeah. explain it otherwise, or... Yeah, but if you ask a, a young Mormon now, they don't know those stories. No, they don't. And now, a lot of the other reasons, there was things about basketball, I think, or yeah. sanctions against the church because of their position with the blacks, and then uh, people going, being able to go to the temple in South America and that right. kind of stuff. So you find that stuff out later, that's probably what prompted the revelation. <laughs> mm-hmm. it would, I think what yeah. prompted it was they were building those temples in the countries that are predominantly yeah. black. And they needed to, they couldn't tell who was. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so what uh, What happens after that? You're married and have children? I got married. Uh, my wife was fairly active in the Mormon church. We'd, yeah. I moved out to Oklahoma for a short time doing some work and stuff yeah. out there. Um, we, uh, my children were um, brought into it because of our history. I really wasn't active because I was more uh, into working and providing for my mm-hmm. family. Yeah. Um, she would go to church a lot, and then she'd come back and tell me what happened <laughs> or whatever. Uh, then we came back to St. George, and uh, my kids, in, at, at that time, it was St. George was probably 90 to 95 percent predominantly Mormon. How long ago was that? That was back in 1979 mm. and 80. Wow, almost 40 years yeah. or so, huh? Yeah, I actually moved here in 1973. Oh, okay. so yeah. in St. George. Seen a lot of growth then, I guess. Yeah, haven't you? ten thousand people back then. Yeah, how yeah. how big is it now? A little over. I heard numbers of 120,000 now. Really, the whole area is. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of growth. Yeah, and so when my uh, kids grew, started to grow and and get into school and everything, and you're in a in a neighborhood that's predominantly Mormon. <laughs> right. And they see that you know, the parents of, of those kids are not really active. Mm-hmm. I mean, we'd go every once in a while. Yeah. Um, and they're kind of shunned, my children were. And they felt that, didn't yeah, they? they felt it. And so we had missionaries come in and teach them. Oh. And my children ended up getting baptized. Getting baptized. Did you baptize them? No. Oh, because you were a teacher. No. Yeah. yeah, okay. I didn't hold the priesthood. <laughs> um, and my uncle did. Yeah. He baptized them. And so, you know, we went on from there. Okay. So what happens in life to change your, change well, things? I ended up with my first wife. We got uh, divorced in 1991. Mm-hmm. Um, I went off working in different parts, lived here in St. George, stayed, in, you know, as my home base, uh, as well as they did too. They had yeah. our house. Um, I ended up working and, and uh, coming back and, and uh, meeting my uh, high school gal that I went to, graduated from high school with, and I ended up marrying her in 1994. Wow. Yeah. And uh, she was a Christian, and I was a Mormon. Well, she would go to church, and of course, I wouldn't go to a Christian church. I wanted to, you know, I was Mormon, (laughs) even though I didn't 
really go, practice. Which is that back feeling, or the feeling was that the church was right. the only the true only church. The only true church. Or, yeah. I couldn't go to a, you know, a Baptist church, especially yeah. a Baptist church. That, that was really, <laughs> really bad. Um, but in 2002, uh, my son had uh, issues with the law. He'd always had issues with the law. Oh dear. Ever since I, I got divorced from his mother, there was not, I guess, my influence. Something. Huh? Not there. So from about age 10, he was having trouble with the law. Oh dear. Um, but in 2002, he had, uh, uh, after many years of having trouble with the, the law, he went on a three-state crime spree, is what the news organization said oh it was. Oh my goodness. He was shot in California, in Northern California in a parking lot in a bakery. And the police contacted us, uh, contacted his mother, and she had moved to Salt Lake, was living there at the time. Um, and she had called me and uh, said that our son was shot and that he wasn't expected to live. Wow. And if we wanted to say goodbye to him for the last time, he, he was still alive at the time, we've got to get there. Yeah. So I jumped in my truck and drove up there, picked her up, and drove as fast as I could across uh, <laughs> Nevada <laughs> and into California uh, just to, in the hopes to, that to see your boy, to yeah. see him before he died. Yeah. Um, what ended up happening, as I'm driving, I am praying to a God I didn't know. I realize that, and I'm asking God to please save my son's life. Mm -hmm. And it had an effect on me, but uh, uh, in what wasn't way? A change. In what way? What was I it? knew I needed help. That was the and only was, way. It was that out I of could, your hands. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't pay enough money <laughs> to a doctor to save my son's life, but I knew uh, that God could help yeah. if I prayed to Him. And I prayed to Him and I said, God, please do this, uh, and I'll do anything that you ask. I thought, you know, I'm going to bargain with God. And he, he'll accept that I'm going to follow him yeah. just to save my son's Were life. Were you afraid what he would ask of oh, you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> in the bargain? <laughs> yeah, and so I get there, and I get to the hospital. I see my son in, in ICU, and it was horrible. I mean, just what he looked like. I didn't even recognize him. Oh, shoot. Um, the police, or the doctors there showed me x-rays. He still has five bullets in him. Um, oh, my goodness. But it, they were in spots where it was more dangerous to take him out, and they didn't yeah. expect him to live anyway. Right. In my Bible now, I carry around a picture of him in ICU. And his five bullets. And his five <laughs> bullets still left in him. He was shot with double lot buck, which is nine pellets per shell. He was shot four times. Oh, my goodness. So they got a lot of them out. Yeah. Um, and only by God's, I mean, even the doctor said there's no reason he should be alive. Um, God saved my son that day. I know it. And there was a chapel in the bottom of that hospital. My, my first wife, she was there with me. She would go in there and pray. But I wouldn't. While I'm in that hospital, I wouldn't pray because, you know, I'd made that bargain. Yeah. And I'm sitting there and thinking, now I'm in trouble. <laughs> you know, I've got to I got to clean up. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. You live here. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I may have to honor what I promised. And then it started hitting me. I was there for a couple of weeks. And it started hitting me that, uh, you know, I got to do this, but I can't. I can't do it. And so I decided that the doctor saved my son's life. And so when, we, when I was on my way home, it was like two or three weeks after that event, and I was dropping her off, and I was coming down to St. George, and it hit me that God did it. That you was my born You couldn't again. rationalize the fact the doctors did No. It. And I was born again at that moment. It was November 7, 2002, at right around 7 p.m. I was in my truck alone. And I realized Coming I started into crying. Uh -huh. yeah, and realized all these years when I thought that I, I wasn't worthy enough to be a part of the Mormon church, yeah. I realized then I wasn't. I never will be worthy enough. I can't be. I need a Savior. Is my life worth, you know, bargaining chip? No. 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 God did that despite my, he did it because of my prayer. Despite, despite our being sinners yeah. and stuff. Yeah. yeah. And I realized how, how lousy I am and how much I need a Savior. 
and that's what changed. And you hadn't read that in the Bible, you no. just felt it. I didn't believe in the Bible because the, art, the articles of faith say, you know, it's Isn't only as good it? as it's correctly and translated. And here you are, you really haven't been in the church since, what, 15, 16, yeah. 18 something, and you still have that article of faith hanging oh, over yeah. your head. It's drummed in you. Yeah. You know, and especially when you're coming from a historical background of your family is all Mormon. So what did you think in the car then as you're driving? <sighs> you know, I thought, I've got to, I've got to find out who this God is. Yeah. I got to find uh, the true God. Um, I got to read the Bible, and I've got to decide and study it out yeah. to make sure that it's correct because I was always taught that it wasn't. Yeah. Did you do that? I did that. Yeah. And actually, at that moment when I was born again, I really didn't believe in the Bible. No, no, at I all. know. I, and I, so as I'm as I'm studying it, and I and then I got into the Book of Mormon, and Doctrine and Covenants, Pearl of Great Price, oh. started really studying that Go back. because something, you know, has to be correct here. Yeah. Um, I started studying the Bible, and researching it, and over a period of probably two years, then I come to that understanding that you know what, it's a hundred percent. You can trust the Bible. I can trust it. <laughs> And I related Boy, that. Isn't into that the, a wonderful? Yeah. Yeah. And related related that with the Book of Mormon, and I couldn't trust that. Yeah. You started learning some of the other stuff, and mm -hmm. but isn't that Bible? Isn't just it's just amazing, isn't it? Oh, jeez. And now, and now I don't can't speak for you, but I can't get enough of it. I can't. It just the messages that are there are just yeah, unbelievable. You, you know, I mean, you you look at it and you say, as far as Bible study. You never graduate from Bible study. No, you know you can go as deep as you want. Always learning and always constantly changing, you know, deeper meanings, different things. Yeah. Uh, so amazing. when did all this happen? You said 2002. 2002. Gosh, so that's 15 years ago. Yeah. Huh? What'd your wife think? Ah, she was elated. Yeah. She loved it. And since did then, did you my, start going to church with oh, her? Then, of course. I I actually came back. She was she had been going to a Baptist church, and I said I've got to find a church. First of all, I had to go to the Baptist church here yeah. to thank them for their prayers because she had, had been praying gotten, for the son and praying yeah. for him. Um, I showed up there um, and thanked them. And I was looking for a Bible believing, not a religion. Yeah. I, 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 it's so, not about a religion. So it's more of a non denominational yeah. church. Yeah, and, and, I, and I wanted that relationship. I yeah. didn't want a religion. Um, I thought religion really gets us in trouble. Yeah. You know, man made. Yeah. Um, so I started searching. Uh, I found a little church called Calvary Chapel mm. back then, and uh, <clears throat> I started attending there. And I realized all they did was teach straight from the Bible. How shocking! Yeah, amazing. <laughs> Who would you know, have guessed? <laughs> the biggest thing was that I'm sitting in the in the sanctuary in there, and the the pastor speaking is you know reading right from the Bible, and I'm turning to my wife at that moment, going. You told him about me, didn't you? You know, the things that he was teaching, it was a message to me. You I just could, thought, okay, this is just for yeah, me today, yeah, and this isn't what yeah, he usually yeah, does. Yeah. Yeah. And then I found out it's just, you know, he just reads through the Bible. Yeah. And God speaks to us through it. So. Yeah. Music, did you notice a difference in the music Huge. and the and the worship? Yeah. And, if, you know, I mean, you go into a, even a, a conservative Calvary Chapel, people are holding their hands up and, and praising the praising Lord. Praising God. That, Kind Jesus. of a, as coming from a Mormon background, that really freaks you out. Yeah, know? a little different. Yeah, yeah. And the music and, and the, the music. band and stuff. Yeah. But there's a, a joy, uh, uh, certainly a freedom, but you're worshiping mm -hmm. Jesus. And we've even had people say, well, all you Christians have is Jesus. Well, <laughs> what else yeah. do you really yeah. need? Yeah. You know, it's just funny how, how what the perspective is. Yeah. So you now are actually doing some of the worships, uh, part of the worship team, or yeah. there at Calvary Chapel. Yeah, I'm uh, been a part of the video portion, and I edit their TV show. Oh, okay. Um, I do a lot of different things. And when does that air? That airs Sunday mornings at seven o'clock on. Uh, it's KCSG out of here, out of St. Yeah, we get that in Salt Lake yeah. on, a, on our. Yeah, it goes to Comcast I think about and four or five states actually. Does it really? Have you had good response from? Yeah, that? we've had a real good response. And it's por a portion of the worship service and his sermon that you say mm -hmm. you kind of do one half. Yeah, one, one half of the Sunday and service and then 
the second half the next time. We're actually a year behind on the... I would guess, because yeah. you're, yeah. When I finish, when he finishes a book, then I'll usually <laughs> update it and go to current. And then he moves to the next yeah. book and stuff. Well, I just, I'm thrilled. Uh, it, things that we just, uh, just take for granted as Mormons, we just don't realize that it's all taken out of context and it's, it's man has imposed these different things, the word of wisdom and, mm -hmm. and different things that we just never, uh, that aren't biblical or, or right. anything. Yeah. And down to even the prophets, you know, I mean, really, yeah. the Bible has an explanation for that. Yeah. Deuteronomy tells what a prophet is. Yeah. And, you know, you have to measure everything up to a pre-existing work of God, correct? Yeah. And that's the Bible. Yeah. So if you have something that's come at later, another testament, exactly, we've it, got to it's compare it to the original. Rather than take accept that and then dismiss the Bible. Right. Yeah. You mentioned to me earlier about uh, your, uh, an influence that this tragedy in Ghana had. Mm -hmm. You want to share that just real quick? Yeah, Jim Jones, when Jim Jones had his People's Temple, I yeah. believe it was called, uh, had all the uh, his parishioners go down with him down to South America to Guyana and they ended up that was a big thing when I was I was probably 17 18 years old oh yeah it was the news and, and everything yeah. yeah and all the people uh, ended up taking the, we called it the Kool-Aid <laughs> uh, Kool taking yeah. poison because he said that he was instructed by God to have that happen yeah. my thoughts were at the time and it spooked me um, thinking of Mormonism if the prophet of the church at that time would have come out and said to all Mormons, tomorrow is the end of the world. God's instructed me and give me a revelation to, to take do this your own or life, that or, yeah. how many would follow? Would follow. Not only just Mormons, but anyone that's following a man, yeah. following a, a religion, right. the Pope or whatever. Yeah. That Putting really, their trust in a man yeah. rather than in God. Right. Yeah. And that, that really steered me away from organized religion. <laughs> Um, the fear of it. And I asked those questions to yeah. even my grandparents. And they said, all their answer would, oh, he would never do that. Yeah. Well, I think the people in Guyana at Jim Jones Church didn't think that he would do that either. Yeah, and they uh, they just followed him. So have you, were you able to talk to your grandparents after 2002? And yes. I, has that I, been tough? It was tough. Uh, they actually passed away shortly after that, so Did I didn't have a chance. Uh, my mom and my dad yeah. uh, uh, have come out of Mormonism and are active. My mom was really active in the, in the Baptist church here. Really? My sister's out. Oh, my ex-wife is out. Um, your ex-wife yeah, is too. She's a, a Christian. <laughs> my goodness. Uh, a believer. Um, my dad, a year ago last September, this last September, passed away. Yeah. But a month before he passed away, he was baptized in the First Southern my goodness, uh, was this? A life of, of Mormonism or, or nothing, actually, you know, with yeah. his life. Uh, and the and last he gave year of his, his life, life to the Lord. he gave his life to the Lord. Oh, praise God. And, and his, this, was this from your influence? I mean, mine to, and my sister. Well, of course, God's, yeah, of course. God. But I mean, you, you were able to influence all these, yeah. you and your sister were able to influence yeah. so many. Yeah. yeah. And from that one event, I, I look at it when my son got <laughs> shot, what God did with that as a ripple in a pond. That was the single spark that started all this stuff. Well, I'm, I'm proud of you. I know Mormons don't like to use that word proud, but I'm proud of you to have the courage to follow through with that. I mean, you, you kind of said you went the way of rationalizing the doctors took care of things and it really wasn't yeah. God, but then he, he told you otherwise again. And, yeah, and the thing yeah. with Mormonism is my history I love the Mormon people. I still have oh, I lots too. of family. Lots of in family. There. Yeah. I am still on their rolls. Yeah. I'm not like a lot of Christians who that hurried up and wrote the letter Take and, your name and off. because it didn't matter to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I've got other friends that have done that, and I, yeah. I, they say, "Well, why haven't you?" And I says, "Because yeah. if I'm on the rolls, then I still get visitation, <laughs> visiting her own teachers, her own teachers, and <laughs> gives and you a chance to share the yeah. word, huh?" Yeah. Uh, um, you know, we always talk about grace and works and that sense of worthiness. You mentioned it a little bit. Can you address that just a little, how you feel? Yeah. Uh, it's only by the grace of God my son is alive today. It's only by the grace of God that my parents accepted the Lord. Yeah. Um, it's not because of what we do. 
or the works we do because our works, as the Bible says, are filthy rags. Yeah. We can't do anything. Uh, we have to realize that we have broken the law. We are guilty of the law. And we will never not never be, not, right? <laughs> not be, and we will never be worthy. It's only because of the righteousness of Jesus yeah. that brings us to it. And, and Mormons really don't, I didn't understand it. I guess yeah, I should say I all either. Mormons, but it just seems like a prevalent concept that they just don't understand. But in Mormonism, didn't you feel like that you could you may be able to attain it. The more you well, did. you work hard enough, yeah. you'll get close, yeah. you know, and then Jesus picks up that last little bit for you. Yeah. That's kind After of what all I, you can do. Huh? That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah, and now we know he's done it all. <laughs> yeah, and what a relief, right? <laughs> and all we're asked to do is believe. Yeah, yeah. That's John what the Bible says. 6, 28, and 9. Yeah. You know, the work of God. Yeah, what is the work of God? To believe. believe. In the one that he sent. Uh -huh. yeah. Well, Dave, you've got an awesome story, and let me just check my notes here. Gosh, uh, yeah, we talked about the fact you were on the worship team, so you do the lighting and stuff, and, and also the cam uh I do all the camera the work sun. and yeah. some sound work. Yeah. Um, I've shied away, I'm almost 60 years old now, so I shy away <laughs> from climbing up the ladders to do Smart. the lighting. Smart. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, so it's, well, it's you've, been a blessing to do it. You mentioned you still have family maybe in the church. What would you say to them? What would encourage them to do what? Uh, just study to really find out the truth because I can tell you that, the, you know, that I know for a fact that the Mormon religion, the doctrine, yeah. is not true. Is everyone in the Mormon church not saved? No. I, I believe there are. I believe there are saved. People that have a heart That have, be, despite their doctrine, yeah. have that relationship. And I, I would just say Pursue a relationship with Jesus. Don't look at it as uh, trying to, you know, work your way into it. Right. Don't bargain like I did with right. God because it doesn't <laughs> work out. Um, just pursue that relationship and find out for yourself. Well, you know, in, in our whole discussion here, we really haven't talked about any of the bad news that I call it, of the gospel, the doctrine, and all that stuff. We've been talking about the good news, mm -hmm. the gospel, and, and who Jesus is and what he did for us. And I think that's the message. And if, if Mormons even would grab that Bible and do a, maybe go to a Bible study, but really to be willing to open it up and read it, it's, it's the Word of God and it's powerful. Yeah. Yeah. And study. I mean, yeah. really get in and read it yeah. as, a, as a newborn baby. You yeah. know, I mean, look at it from the beginning, not don't use... Mormon influence yeah. to dissuade you or any influence. Well, Dave, thanks so much for your time. I appreciate it. Yep. You're a good man. We'll see you next time on the Ex-Mormon Files.